Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing this winter scene with a moose gazing into the distance towards the mountain. And I plan to do a number of winter scenes. The first one, this one, is going to be in charcoal. I use a combination of charcoal pencils and vine charcoal. First I'm going to do the sketch and I'm going to say a few words about the materials, the size of the paper and things like that and then we're going to move on with the details. So the size of the paper is 9 times 12 inches as usual. Horizontal orientation this time. I decided to place the animal more to the right and the rest of the landscape and those trees are going to be to the left. I want to make it look like uh, the animal is gazing towards those trees in the distance. Um, I'm doing a sketch with a graphite pencil as I normally do and I'm trying to get the size and the proportions right. I started from those horns and it doesn't really matter if it's not 100% accurate. I'm just trying to make it look like the animal that I'm trying to draw. Uh, so that's it's a combination of uh, wildlife and landscape, I guess. Winter landscape. As for the other drawing tools, I'm mostly going to be using charcoal. I'm going to be using charcoal pencils and vine charcoal. For most of the background, I'm going to be using vine charcoal. So here, as you can see, I'm finishing the sketch and just uh, laying out some of the basic uh, elements of the animal's anatomy. So uh, once I got that initial graphite pencil sketch in place, I decided to go over it uh, with a charcoal pencil. I'm using woodless charcoal pencils uh, and two grades, uh, the medium one and the soft one. This is the medium charcoal pencil and I'm just using it to establish some darker lines because once I start drawing the background uh, there's going to be a bit of blending and I'm going to be adding a little bit of value to that background. So I want to avoid my sketch uh, being blended in. I don't want it to disappear. I want to have a clear idea where the animal where the animal is supposed to be and I don't want to lose the details of my sketch. So once I go over it with a charcoal pencil I'm going to be able to move on with the rest of the background and the, the sketch will still remain in place. So these are the large nostrils and the mouth uh, that the moose has. This is a bull moose, it's a male moose. It has these uh, uh, the longer fur here under the neck. So as you will see, the length of the fur varies depending on the body part. But this is good enough for now. I'm going to be moving on with the background now. So I started uh, working on the background using some charcoal powder that I created myself by sharpening. And I started blending that lightly using a soft brush, but that was kind of going a little bit slow. So I decided to pour that charcoal onto the paper and spread it, ar spread it around using a larger brush. And that sort of did the trick, except for the fact that I had to do uh, a little bit more of additional blending so that the background would become a bit smoother. And the reason why I wanted it to be smoother was because I wanted it to, lo to look like sky, uh, not clear sky, but slightly darker winter sky. And another reason why I wanted it to be a little bit darker, which is why I kept adding a little bit more value and a little bit more vine charcoal to the background, Another reason why I uh, wanted it to be a little bit darker was because I wanted to have some uh, snowflakes. I, I wanted it to, to look like it's snowing, so in order for the snow to show up, I needed a slightly darker background. And of course I'm going to draw the snow 
using my pencil eraser. Um, but I'm going to start working on that once I once I blend everything in a little bit, a little bit more thoroughly. So it's a fairly simple winter scene, but uh, what what is good about this scene and what I'm hoping will capture the attention of the viewer is the amount of contrast between the background, which is very light, and the animal in the foreground, which is a lot darker. So now I'm going to draw some. I'm going to draw some stuff in the background. I want to make it look like uh, it, it's a sort of a mountain with some trees on top of those on top of those hills. And first, I'm going to draw one of them, which is slightly further back. And the further back you look, the less defined uh, they will be. So I'm just making some suggestions of trees way back in the distance. But here, a, a little bit closer, I'm going to make some indications of slightly larger, taller trees because they are closer to us. So first I'm going to do this one which is further in the back and I'm going to make that a little bit darker and I'm going to blend that very softly and gently using a synthetic brush I don't really need that to be too defined I want to make it look like the top of that hill in the back is almost disappearing in the fog or something. Now with these trees which are slightly closer to us I'm gonna to want to make them a bit more defined. They are still going to be a little bit blurry because they too are further in, far in the distance but like I said I want to kind of push that other hill back by making it clear that that this one is in front and that these trees are closer to us. So I'm just drawing some vertical lines and gen uh, just drawing some horizontal shapes around them so that they kind of look like coniferous trees and I don't really have to worry too much about the shape because the shape is going to be kind of loose and not very well defined. So I'm going to be refining the shape a little bit using these uh, Using, using a tortillion. These are tortillions that I make myself. I like to roll them into a nice tip so that I can use them not only as a blending tool but also as a drawing tool. And you can see that now as I'm using my tortillion to refine these trees at the top of that hill it's starting to look a little more convincing, it's starting to look a little bit more like a uh, row of trees. So it's all about creating an illusion of detail, something that will kind of trick the eye that there are some very detailed trees that I spent, uh, that I spent a lot of time a drawing but in reality it's fairly simple but I don't want to put too much effort into the background not only because I'm lazy but also because I want to allow my main subject to stand out and the lighter and the less defined the background is the more the main subject will stand out 
I made the bottom of that other hill a little bit lighter so that it's kind of it looks like uh, the mist mist is gathering at the bottom. And now I'm going to use a pencil eraser. So th this is an eraser in a pencil, and it can be sharpened like a pencil. And I'm using it to draw some snowflakes. I want to make it look like it's snowing, and I'm going to make it look fairly dense, like it's snowing pretty hard. And sometimes I'm able to clean up a nicer, lighter shape uh, with a pencil eraser, sometimes not so much. That's why I have to keep cleaning or uh, resharpening that pencil eraser. But I don't have to worry too much about whether all of these snowflakes will be uh, almost completely white, whether they will stand out or not. Some of them can stand out a little bit more, others less. I think that will contribute to the realism. So some of them, are, some of them will be lighter than the others, and I kind of want them to vary, both in terms of their shape and size and the amount of value. So I'm just going to keep doing that and drawing a whole bunch of snowflakes all over the sky. And you can see that I also drew some snowflakes in front of those trees. And they stand out much better against a darker area. So now I, I established some of the basic elements of my scene. I have a nice winter landscape and it looks like it's on the mountain and it's snowing. Now to give that scene, to give that landscape a little bit of extra depth and to kind of connect the main subject to the background a little bit more, I'm going to draw some more trees here in the midground and I'm going to make it look like these trees are uh, a bit closer to us, so more in front uh, in front of the others. And I drew one all the way on the left. I'm going to draw another one. Now you can see, uh, by the way, I'm using a vine charcoal stick. You can see that here I'm putting quite a bit more effort into the into the shape of those trees. I want to make it, I want to make them look like some coniferous trees, maybe fir trees. And uh, as you can see, I've put in a bit more effort into their shape, so now they look quite a bit more defined and realistic. <coughs> I'm going to work on them a little bit with a brush and a tortillion, and kind of muddy and soften their bottom the base a little bit so that it looks like they're, they're in the snow and I'm also lifting up a little bit of charcoal using a pencil eraser so that it looks like they have some snow on them uh, like uh, these uh, like these branches are drooping with snow so I'm hoping that I'm achieving that look I also added a little bit of shadow which is coming from left to right and now I'm adding some dry grass sticking sticking out here and there from the snow just to add some more details to the snow and to make the terrain a little more interesting uh, I'm also gonna add some variation in terms of value to the snow I'm gonna add some darker areas and I'm gonna blend those in because I don't, I want very smooth transitions. I want everything to look like thick snow. And on top of that, I'm going to draw some lighter areas. And I established those darker areas by using vine charcoal and my blending tools, a tutillion and the brush. And now I'm using a pencil eraser to pull some highlights and to draw some lighter areas to give that terrain, that snowy terrain, a little more shape so that it looks a bit more three-dimensional. 
and a little bit more interesting. So I think that should do it for now. I don't need to make it too defined or too detailed. All I have to do for now is to try to make that scene a little more convincing and realistic so that it doesn't take away from the whole impression. But the, the animal, the moose in the foreground is going, is going to be the most detailed part of the drawing. I made those trees, by the way, a little bit taller because I wanted to make it clear like they're in front of the others so I needed to make them a bit larger as well. And now I'm drawing some more of these snowflakes because if it's snowing, it's snowing in all parts of this uh, scene. Now in some parts of the scene, uh, the snow won't stand out as much because there's not enough contrast, but that's okay. The eye will still pick up on these snowflakes wherever they are visible, and that's good enough. So the background is largely complete now, and I'm ready to move on with the foreground. I'm ready to move on with my main subject. It's a bull moose uh, with some impressive horns. I apologize in advance if I don't know the proper term, uh, terms, the proper terminology for the animal's anatomy. But I'm just an artist and I'm doing the best I can to make it as realistic as possible. And now I'm, I'm using a very sharp medium charcoal pencil and I'm approaching this very very gently very carefully and the reason why I'm working so slowly is because I can't really draw very straight lines or nice curved lines from this angle one of the problems when you're recording is that your movement is kind of restricted and your angles are also restricted so I have to record my drawing process so that it's watchable, so that it's more comfortable for you to watch and observe the drawing technique, but the truth is that if I, uh, if I weren't recording, I would probably be doing this in a slightly different manner. I would be rotating the paper or just doing something else, trying to make it a little more comfortable for me to draw these straight and curved lines so that they're really clean because I need to have a clean edge there. Uh, another thing that you'll see me doing uh, is that I'm also trying to produce a bit of texture on these horns because horns have their own texture so it's not exactly a uh, smooth surface there's there's a little bit of rough surface on them so I'm now going to start shading the main part of that horn to the left and for blending I'm going to be using mostly brushes and the good thing about brushes is that they allow you to preserve most of the texture they soften everything and make everything blended in a bit more nicely but a lot of the texture remains that's a good thing about brushes so I'm going to keep that, keep that in mind and I'm going to proceed with the shading process. I'm shading by using a tapered stroke, so it's basically a form of hatching. And I'm going to be using some cross hatching as well to make some of these areas a bit darker and to add some more value to them. And like I said, I'm using a tapered stroke. I'm using a fairly sharp medium charcoal pencil. And if you can't see which type of pencil it is, it's a medium charcoal pencil, it's just that I'm, I put it in a pencil holder because it's getting a little bit short. So pencil holder, holders are very convenient tools uh, because you want to use most of your, most of your pencils, uh, you don't want to throw them away when they get shorter. So I'm using this uh, tapered stroke to 
create some gradual transitions from lighter to darker values, or rather from darker to lighter values here. Because the horns themselves are kind of complex, both in terms of their texture and their shape. And I'm going to try to um, render that using, using this slow shading and texturing process. You can see that I'm creating some texture. I'm deliberately allowing the pencil to create some texture. And I'm adding some additional texture by cross-hatching. I can even use uh, a different kind of, kind of stroke here and there. I can use a little bit of a dragging motion here and there to produce some other types of textures. But I also have to shade the horn so that its shape makes sense to the viewer. Keeping in mind that the light source is coming from above but mostly from the left side or at least more from the left side than the right. So each part of these horns uh, which is facing away from the light source is a little bit darker. So the bottom side and the right side of each and every one of these elements. And like I said, you can see a lot of rough texture and some lines here. That's not going to be a problem because I'm, del uh, I'm deliberately trying to create that. And I'm using brushes to smooth that out a little bit and to, smooth, uh, to soften that as much as possible without actually uh, removing that texture. So I don't want to destroy that texture. I want it to remain there so that it looks like uh, horn. I want different different parts of the animal to have different textures and horns will naturally have a texture of their own just like the fur will have a texture of its own. I used a soft charcoal pencil to add some even darker areas at the bottom of that horn and you can see uh, how much I'm increasing the range of value now and how much this uh, dark charcoal pencil is contributing to the feeling of volume and depth in my scene. blending that as well with a brush, kind of pushing those darker areas towards the lighter areas and making a smoother transition. That's one of the tricks that I often use during my shading process. I like to establish lighter areas and darker areas and then I allow them to meet in the middle by pushing the charcoal from the darkest areas to the lighter areas and making uh, smoother transitions in the process. I'm going to add some additional texture using a pencil eraser and also establish some contrast between the between the areas which are facing away from the light source and those which are lighter which are facing towards the light source. Here I'm going to start working on the fur and I'm working on the ears first. The ears are also covered uh, with a certain amount of fur but it's slightly shorter and first I draw a little bit of indications of, of those hairs and then I blend that in with a brush. And now it's time to talk about uh, drawing fur and I've talked about this in many of my other videos where I draw wildlife but there are a couple of rules when you're drawing fur, animal fur. You have to pay attention to your reference photo. 
by the way I'm adding some snowflakes in front of the horns as well because this is a nice, di uh, nice dark area where they will stand out I want to stay consistent with my scene if it's snowing in the background it's going to be snowing in the foreground as well so back to what I was saying about drawing fur you have to pay attention to your reference photo you have to study the appearance of the fur on your animal and you have to make sure that uh, uh, length of the fur that the length of your strokes matches the length of the fur and also you have to ma match the direction of your strokes with the direction in which the fur grows so as long as you stay consistent and f follow these two rules uh, you will end up with a nice looking fur coat for an animal I'm doing the other ear and blending that with a brush and as I've already mentioned when I work with charcoal pencils I first draw these lines to imitate the appearance of the fur keeping in mind of course that I need to match the direction and the length of the fur I'm finishing the horns here on the right So if you look at the ones on the left, uh, the lower part is darker because it's facing away from the light source and also the, the side that is uh, on the right is also facing away from the light source so these are darker. I'm just adding a few, mo a few more snowflakes here and there and then I'm going to move on to uh, working with uh, working on the, the rest of the body so some of these darkest areas like the nostrils and the area around the mouth are going to be done with a soft charcoal pencil both the medium and the soft charcoal pencil are fairly dark darker than vine charcoal obviously but the soft charcoal pencil is extra dark it's almost pitch black and it allows you to push that range of value even further that's why it's, it's a good idea to use it sparingly for some of the darkest bits I am drawing this longer fur under the neck here and naturally my strokes were also longer but the hair on the top of the head and around the snout will be a lot shorter so my strokes will also be a lot shorter before I move on with the detail and the textures I'm going to cover everything with some vine charcoal to establish some base value. Obviously, the moose will be a lot darker than the background. Quite a bit darker. So I'm just establishing some base value. And then I'm going to draw the fur on top of that. I'm going to spread that vine charcoal with a brush, softening it, making it a lot smoother and more even before I actually start creating some variations in value. I'm also working around the edges with a tortillion to clean them up additionally and now I can start working on the, on the fur. So I zoomed in a little bit more so that you can see uh, some of the stuff that I'm doing. The fur here, the hair is very very short and I'm using very very short strokes almost like dots trying to imitate the appearance of the fur. So the further you go uh, away from the the animal's head the longer the fur is going to become 
and it's especially long around the neck and on the on the upper back I think so here I'm also trying to define the area around the nostril a bit normally uh, when you have a subject like this animal you would and and uh, it has complex looking fur with a lot of details normally you would wor work from larger areas by establishing larger areas of darker value but the thing is that I've already established some of the darkest areas like for example around the mouth, the nostrils, the, the area under the neck and now I can just uh, continue to work on the texture of the fur and if I feel like I need to make the fur darker in some areas I'm just going, I'm going to go over it a little bit more using the same pencil stroke and if I feel like I need to make the, uh, the area of fur uh, lighter I'm just going to use a little bit more of that pencil eraser so I'm going to be working with a pencil eraser on top of all of this work uh, that, I, that I'm doing with a charcoal pencil I've used this same approach many, many times in some of my previous drawings, uh, like for example the drawing of an otter, uh, the drawing of a koala, uh, the raccoon, a mountain lion, uh, wolves, many, many other animals that I drew. And I also did another drawing of a moose about uh, a couple of years ago, I think. So I wanted to do a slightly different scene involving a moose. This one is a winter scene. Like I said, because it's winter and um, the days are getting colder and there's going to be some snow soon. Many parts of the world have already had it. Um, I plan to do a number of winter landscapes. I don't normally draw landscapes that are inspired by the weather outside, but sometimes I do. Uh, the next one is going to be a slightly simpler landscape, I think, but we'll see. Well, slightly simpler in the sense that it won't be involving any wildlife. It'll just be some trees and snow. That's at least what I'm planning to do, but we'll see. So you can see how I'm kind of overlapping some of these strokes, trying to vary the direction of the fur ever so slightly. So when I say that you need to pay attention to the direction of the fur, um, that doesn't mean that you have to draw all of your strokes in the exact same direction and make them parallel to one another you need to vary the direction slightly and you need to vary the angle and the length ever so slightly and that way the fur will appear uh, a little more realistic and organic uh, so you don't want to make it look artificial but if it looks like a whole bunch of lines now it won't remain like that because you see when I start blending with a brush everything becomes a lot softer and a lot more realistic but as a side effect everything becomes also quite a bit darker as well but that's okay I'm not too worried about that because I'm gonna be pulling some highlights with a pencil eraser eventually once again when you're using a brush the brush allows you to retain some of the texture so this stiff bristle brush, bristle brush that I'm using it's pretty hard it's kind of pushing the charcoal into the paper but it's pushing the charcoal in, into the paper and preserving the lines at the same time if I were using a tortillion 
uh, a lot of these lines would be dis disappearing and I would kind of be ruining all the all of the wonderful texture that I worked on so patiently because even though this is not a super complex drawing it took about a couple of hours maybe an hour and 50 minutes or so and the moose itself probably took half that time and the reason why it takes a bit longer is because you have to layer all of these strokes so that I can make the fur look realistic and so that I can also establish some contrast between the lighter and darker areas. You can see that I've put down quite a bit more charcoal in those shadow areas like for example all the way on the right and um, under the neck and some other areas which are facing away from the light source. So I'm blending this large area which I covered with a whole bunch of these strokes and you can see that my strokes were quite a bit longer in that area because the fur is getting longer on that part of the body and I felt that I needed to add even more so I added a few more strokes using a medium charcoal pencil at the bottom all the way on the right I used a soft charcoal pencil to make that even darker <clears throat> so now I need to define this area around the horns and I need to start pulling some highlights first I'm going to start with, this, uh, with the area around the ears and then I'm going to move down the rest of the head and the neck so you can see basically what I'm doing now is I also added a small reflection in the eye to make the eye look more lively and realistic and I'm adding some lighter areas on the snout defining the nostrils and the, the jaw and the mouth a little bit more but I'm also adding these shorter strokes uh, trying to imitate highlights on that fur so basically I'm doing the same thing that I did uh, with a charcoal pencil but now I'm doing that with a pencil eraser so a pencil eraser is just another drawing tool but I'm using it to draw lighter shapes instead of the darker shapes that I'm uh, that I drew with a charcoal pencil and I'm doing the same thing as I'm moving further down the, the animal's body the longer the fur the longer are my strokes with a pencil eraser so the the lightest fur because of, because of the light source is going to be on the top of the animal's body so I'm going to be pulling the highlights a little bit harder here making sure that these strokes are even lighter and making sure that I'm consistent with my light source so you can see that now the animal is starting to sh uh, take uh, shape and it's starting to appear like it has volume in addition to all of the texture that I initially created but the work that I'm doing with the pencil eraser is allowing these individual hairs to stand out and the darker areas which I established with the charcoal pencil they serve as shadow areas in between the lighter areas so basically what I'm trying to achieve is that is like some clumps of hair are sticking out and getting more light while others are in the shadow. So it's all about creating uh, an illusion of depth in that fur and making it look more three-dimensional. And now I'm using a pencil eraser to add some snowflakes in front of the in front of the moose as well because obviously it's snowing everywhere and uh, they're going to be more visible uh, when there's a greater amount of contrast when there's something darker behind them so I'm gonna add a whole bunch of these snowflakes and once I finish that my drawing will be pretty much complete so just a few more snowflakes and the drawing is almost finished this is what it looks like I'm just going to put my signature in the lower left corner to balance it out a little bit. And that's it. So I hope I hope you like this winter scene. Don't forget to check out my other videos. If you want to see longer videos, you can also check out my Patreon. You can find lots of content there. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.